So hello everyone. Uh, my name is Mojtaba. I'm a PhD researcher in K. Leuven from uh, in Belgium. Uh, thank you for inviting me for this talk. This is indeed my my favorite topic uh, to talk about open source computational engineering and multi-scale modeling and this sort of stuff. I try to be you know general as possible and uh, you know to, to introduce you what open source tools uh, have to say in uh, in the computational modeling, multi-scale modeling, more specifically in biomedical engineering and biomedicine. So, uh, excuse me, yeah. So, uh, free and open source software. The movement started in 1983 uh, in the United States and the motivation behind was, uh, let's create, you know, free alternative uh, tools to the proprietary and commercial available ones. And then it started to, to enter science and engineering in the 90s. And now for more than three decades, it's really, you know, dominating in lots of different domains. And what is really important to pay attention to is free, when we say free and open source, free doesn't mean free of charge. Yeah, in most of the cases, 99%, it's free of charge as well. But when we say free software, it means it points to freedom and flexibility. This is a very important, you know, concept in when we talk about open source and free software. And uh, as I said, this this movement, this kind of philosophy and development, uh, let's say, ecosystem has a lot to say for computational engineering and multi-scale modeling. Before going to the details, or you know. The things that I want to tell you about how to use these things. Let's have a quick look at uh, what is the core differences between commercial or let's say proprietary software programs and open source tools. The first and one of the most important differences is related to the licenses. So for licensing open source tools are free to install and even distribute or redistribute. But for prop proprietary you have a limited paid license. Source code is available to modify by everyone, by anyone in a planet for open source tools, but in proprietor it's not. And the total cost of ownership is relatively low, is super low in comparison to, 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 to the commercial software. And I said it's low and it's not totally free because yeah, total cost of ownership includes, you know, trainings and adaptation, this kind of stuff as well. And opacity, this is really crucial for multi-scale modeling and computational modeling. A positive, when you work with you know, standards for open source tools, they are open, but for proprietary, proprietary tools, they are not. And for dependency, you have minimal reliance uh, on, the, on the developers, but for, for commercial ones, you, you have to rely on a support provided by the vendor. And the development is community driven for open source, but it is something internal inside a company for a proprietary software. And this one is also important. This is you know, one of the drawbacks, one of the you know, limited drawbacks of open source tools. And when it comes to regulatory trusts and verification, especially for biomedicine, people usually trust more in commercial tools because the company uh, have had more time on going through the regulatory things and you know, preparing those kind of tests and standards for the tools. But if someone can, you know, verify him or, or, or her, his or her work, then I can say, yeah, there is no problem in, in using open source tools, even if they don't have regulatory, you know, standards. So for open source, uh, why open source is important and really, you know, crucial aspects of computational modeling and multi-scale uh, multi modeling and biomedicine is, there are, you know, there are a bunch of available and relevant programs and libraries in this regard. So whenever you search for something, you will find an open source tool developed by someone around the world that is, you know, is aimed to solve your problem. This is really crucial. And then the freedom of flexibility that it brings for the research can help you to go behind the limitations of this oath commercial tools provide. And open formats for easier exchange as, as you, as for example, you've seen a couple of workflows in last two presentations. 
and they require you know transparent and open standards for easier exchange otherwise you cannot easily you know for interoperability it's it becomes very difficult to move models codes and files between different platforms and different software programs and also uh i can say open source has much better and responsive support from the community in comparison to to non-open source or proprietary tools you can see that when you start to work with a tool you see that there is a community around it and they really kindly support the users and another important aspect is for reproducibility when you that is becoming more and more important nowadays for open research open science when you do something it should be reproducible by other people other, other, otherwise they cannot put trust on the results and when you work with open source tools it means that yeah everyone on the planet can you know grab your code or model and then reproduce the results because no licensing things is, you know, is required. And also, uh, the whole world can contribute to your research. For example, for the PAX solver that I saw that is developed in your university, when you put it on the internet on a shared repository, uh, like uh, on GitHub or GitLab, people will start to contribute to that to make it better. And this is a big advantage for, for these kind of paradigms. So uh, here is a short list, you know, for 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 a couple of different applications that for some of the tools that you may have heard of, and they're open source alternatives. So this is this might be beneficial uh, for you to know that you you know all the tools that you know are are, are out there uh, have their own alternatives in uh, in open source world, and this is uh, necessary. This is limited to computational engineering. Mechanical analysis, we all know ANSYS and Abacus. And the open source alternative to that can be CodeAster and FE Bio, two powerful mechanical analysis solvers. For multiphysics, it's dominantly, you know, it's occupied by COMSOL, but in engineering, but in, in research, especially if you want to go for that, you have a good alternative called Elmer. And for CFT, ANSYS, CFX, and Fluent are, you know, well known tools. But at the same time, even more powerful, we have OpenFOAM and SU2 that are being widely used in research. And for numerical computing, MATLAB is yeah, the most famous software in the research world, but we have a very identical version of open source work called GNU Octave. For image segmentation that was uh, mentioned in, this, in the previous presentation, uh, materials mimics is a good software, but at the same time, very expensive but we have good alternatives to that in open source world and for cat solidworks autocad they are famous but at the same time we have salon with a wide range of different modules and free cat a very nice uh let's say uh computer data design software and for meshing msc pattern is famous ism as well for cfd but in open source there are lots of different libraries that and tools that can be used for generating mesh files and for post-processing, we don't have any, you know, famous open source, non-open source post-processor. The post-processing are usually done in, you know, software programs. They have their own integrated post-processors. But in open source world, we have the famous PowerView, PowerView software that is also being used by, uh, by uh, people from the proprietor, users for, uh, of proprietary software programs. So as an example in this, I want to present you the, my PhD project that is something that I have done solely using open source tools. So you can see that you can use all these tools together to, 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 to advance a PhD work. My work is related to the modeling of multi-scale modeling of biodegradation behavior of degradable metals. So I have a very sh short in uh, introduction to the project that is indeed related to biodegradable metals, magnesium, zinc, and iron. And it means that you put material inside the body and it starts to gradually disappear and be absorbed by the body. So this is the concept of biodegradable uh, materials. And they have great mechanical properties and at the same time, biological properties, contribution to metabolism of the body and so on. 
their control release profile is an issue that you want to control how it degrades because you want to have a control in you know tissue engineering applications of what happens inside a body. So the degradation behavior should be optimized for various applications. And you can see they have multiple applications, but for each specific application, the behavior should be optimized. So the challenge in the project was tuning the biodegradation rate to the rate of, for example, the generation of new bone or the healing process inside a body. And this can be solved by creating a mathematical model and computational model of biodegradation and coupling those models with you know, different models that uh, just try to you know, find a correlation to open source things that I said, for example, we are open standards or easier file ex ex exchange becomes very crucial. And then we want to consider environmental effects as well. So the modeling workflow is something that's you know, very common among uh, all these uh, computational words. So we have underlying sciences converted to mathematical models and then mathematical models to computational models. In this project, the underlying science is chemistry of biodegradation, the physics of perfusion uh, bioreactors, because to test the, 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 the performance of the degradable metals, we usually use in vitro setups. And in vitro setups, it's perfusion bioreactors that they have fluid flow to provide nutrients and oxygen supply to the cell culture conditions are really crucial. So in a model, the perfusion of bioreactors should be also uh, considered. And also the biology of tissue growth. So you see the different scales, different models, and also uh, different techniques for, for in the mathematical and computational models. So in order to capture all these things together, we, we have to use partial differential equations, mainly reaction diffusion, convection equations, Navier Stokes for fluid flow, and also level set method for to track the change of shape and also the geometry of these scaffolds and the medical devices over time. For computational models, we use a combination of finite elements and finite different techniques, scientific computing libraries, which are all open source solvers. So the model captures, you know, this is just to, to, to you know, to, to, to help you see what, what, what's going on, what is converted to, to, to the mathematics. So this is indeed the chemistry behind. There are also biology behind and physics behind, but this, I wanted to make it short and present just the chemistry. So we have the dissolution of the material in this case, magnesium, and then the formation of you know, famous corrosion products on a surface, and then effects of various uh, ions in the medium to this rate of degradation, and change of pH as well. So these things for the chemistry, for biology, for various things should be converted to mathematical uh, form. And for doing that, as I said, we have to use PDEs. Well, yeah, we can use PDEs, partial differential equations. And as an example for that, for the change of magnesium, magnesium concentration over time, the equation would look something like this. And in order to implement this, as well as you know, the, the model co uh, consists of 10 equations, more or less, to have flexibility to have all these things uh, in your model, you, it's, it's indeed a very good practice to go for open source tools because, as I said, it brings lots of flexibility into, into play. For mesh generation, so these are the steps for implementing computational models. For mesh generation, I use Solom and MMG. And, uh, for finite element formulations, I wrote a code in 3FM that is indeed a C++-like language for finite element computing and for high-performance solutions because, yeah, the, the sim simulations usually includes millions of elements, like 10 million, 20 million of elements. We have to go for parallel computing and high-performance solutions. And I have used PETC. And for post-processing, I use uh, OpenFOAM. So uh, yeah, this is indeed how the, the work is constructed. But uh, for the results, I have a couple of results here to, to, yeah, to show that these are indeed the output. For example, for the degradation of a simple screw in a medium, you can see that we have material release, and then the, the, it's indeed a surface of the screw that is degrading and it's shrinking. So there are, these are indeed materials, uh, the, the metal ions concentrations, as you can see here. 
This is for a job owning plant that they put in a mandible, and, and this is the de its degradation behavior over time, which can be also be coupled by mechanical analysis to, to see the performance, real performance of the, of the, of the implant. And this is uh, an example for that is used for validation. I don't want to talk about validation of this model, but this 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 was used for validation. So a narrow cuboid that we had also an experimental setup for that, and then uh, you can see that it, how it degrades and then it forms a protection layer on on a surface. And this model was really a big model that I think it it contained more than 20 L. 20 million of elements, and this, uh, yeah, this computation was carried out using 200, 300 uh, CPU cores. So this is indeed the animated output. You can see that how it shrinks, how it disappears, and how the material is released to the surrounding environment. These are all generated using Paraview, and this is also, you know, an, an, another open source extension to Paraview that you know, allows the user to have GPU render, uh, rendering of their, their simulations, of their volume representation of models. And this is a change of pH in different, you know, different uh, uh, diffusion regimes, so different solutions in the bodies, in the simulated body solutions, in saline solution, in different environments, this model is capable of um, making predictions. And, you know, type of, uh, this, this is a, a sort of a quantitative output of the model. You can see here, so we have, for example, side uh, corrosion products and also change of pH and a good accord, the good agreement of the model predictions with experimental results. So you can see that, yeah, indeed, these tools uh, can be employed indeed to, to, to make things work and repeat the experimental setup. So this is, you know, a further another step in the in the simulations, coupling Floyd flow. You can see the Floyd flow solver is also implemented in free in open source tools and is coupled with the degradation model. And also this one, this is another type of post processing for Floyd flow. So as I said, all the employed tools are open source. I have just Name them here for for reference. That you know the mesh, meshing tools I have used are mainly GM, GMesh, and Solom and MMG. For CAD design, as I say, I have used Solom FreeCAD. For PD solving, I have used the the library, the language FreeFem. Sorry, and for solving the equations, I use Petsy and Moms. For partitioning the mesh, you know, to, for decomposing the mesh to different CPU cores, I use. Parametis and HPDDM for post processing. I use Perview embedded in Seaboard. For parallelization, I use two open source MPI implementation. And for optimization, because the model requires some calibration, I didn't discuss that. I use Hyper Open Spark. And for preconditioning and high performance solution, I use Petsy. And uh, for mechanical analysis, I used Code Aster. So yeah, that's that's the thing. So in this presentation, I I, uh, I talked a bit about the importance of open source and computational modeling, and uh, the open source alternative for well-known simulation frameworks, and also quantitative. Uh, I showed you how I developed the quantitative computational model to assess the degradation behavior for for improved workflow of implant design. And a final note before you know ending the similar ending the presentation, I want to say that. Uh, for this topic, I have a personal YouTube project to share experience on science on scientific open source computing. So I try to regularly post stuff there, post video about the things that I mentioned in this presentation about how to efficiently employ these tools in research and in, in, in also in industry and how reliable they are. So thank you for your attention. So feel free to reach out if you are interested in, in these topics and then yeah, we can uh, talk more about it.